Hi, in today's video we're going to be looking at how to create a conveyor belt or tank track model and animation. This is a technique I used for my 2013 Christmas animation and I've been meaning to make a tutorial since. So what we'll cover is creating a track path, modeling the track tread, modeling some sort of mechanism that makes it look like the tread is being driven by something, rigging everything together and possibly some animation. Finally, we'll look at some potential pitfalls and alternative ways of doing things um, if they don't occur during the tutorial. So let's get started, shall we? Let's delete the default cube and light. We will need a cube later, but for now it'll get in the way. Um, add and go curve, and you could do either a bezier or a circle, but we're going to do a circle for this tutorial. Um, it just makes things a little bit simpler. Um, I actually prefer the bezier me method, and I'll probably show you that after we've done everything, just so you can sort of get a feel for it. So add circle, tab into edit mode, rotate, RX and 90. One to go in front mode, and we'll scale these out in the X direction to get a sort of a sh tanky shape. Now you'll see what happens here is you get like this bulge and as I scale out you get more of a figure of eight sort of thing. To fix that click V and free handle and then you can just scale in the Z axis. And I'm just going to scale in the X axis as well because I don't like the look of that shape. So there we go. Um, then we'll create a cube by tabbing out of edit mode and adding. Tab into edit mode, S and scale down. And then we want to move this onto the origin, uh, the base onto the origin as much as possible. It doesn't have to be exact, but uh, the closer you get, the better. Control R to subdivide and move that down. E and extrude that grab those top vertices and S and X. And now we have a sort of basic tread object. So let's call this tread and we'll call this um, track. So then we need two modifiers. We'll need an array modifier and we'll also need a curve modifier. Now just a note, um, modeling everything so that it's aligned to the x-axis as we've done means that when you come to do the array and the rigging it's actually a lot simpler if you could potentially do everything aligned into the y-axis but then there's a chance that you have to fiddle with this instead of this and then one of these and it's just so much simpler just keeping everything on with the deformation axis in the x-axis I've just generally found it works a lot better so we're going to change the fit type on the array modifier to fit curve and then we select the curve modifier which uh, the curve object which is the track and you see here it sort of creates as many as you need to fit the length of the curve and as you scale this up you see that scales up as well um, so then we go down to the curve modifier and we set the track again and you'll see that it's moved around it like this. Now you'll see that this has actually gone inside out and the reason for that is the orientation of the curve. Two, two or three simple ways you can fix this. First is to tab into edit mode on the track, uh, the tread object, select the pivot point to 3D cursor and SZ-1 and you see that fixes it. The only thing with this method is if you then want to m manipulate this it can get a bit confusing because obviously it's, everything's upside down now. The other alternative is to go SZ-1 on the path object, but then you have to go Control a and Scale. Uh, sorry, SZ-1, but then everything is scaled negatively. So what you then need to do is Control a and apply the scale. It's one way of doing it. The final method that I prefer to go into edit mode and then scale on the z-axis. Select all SZ minus one. There we go. The only thing about this is, and the reason it's possibly better to use the Bezier curve over the circle, 
is that if you've made any more adjustments to your shape than this then obviously they're going to be flipped so for example if I just undo that scale for a second and if we subdivide these three points like so and then move this up like this to get a more complicated track shape if you then go into edit mode or object mode and say Z minus one you end up with everything upside down um, so what it's best to do is leave the curve as simple and sh as possible apply uh, do the scaling so that everything's the right way around and then you can modify the shape as you want uh, so, for, so like that and then that works perfectly fine so that's basically the track modeled we might just go into here and scale along the y-axis just to make it a bit wider to make it look more tank-like or track-like and you can see here that you've now got this weird gap and there's several ways you can fix this first is you can scale this along the x-axis and it might fix it it's not the best way of doing it but it is one way to do it the second way is to um, go into the uh, the array modifier and just tweak the offset and that will eventually fix it again not the best way the best way is to basically manipulate the length of the curve using the curve points um, scale z uh, scale z and you see that the curve gets slightly shorter or longer and get more or less tread objects so the key is to make sure that you scale just enough that you get rid of the gap without scaling so much that you actually create another gap so that's basically how you fix that issue if you find it it's usually not an issue because if for example it's a a, a tank tread you'll probably have some sort of uh, cover guard above it and unless you're actually at that sort of angle you're not going to notice the gap so th those are just things to sort of keep in mind sorry I hope this isn't too waffly but uh, I'm just trying to cover quite a lot of content as quickly as I can so now we've done this how do we actually get the tread to move well the simplest way is to just grab the tre tread object and move it and you can see it rotates along the curve which is fine if you've got a really simple setup um, but be warned there are some potential pitfalls if you rotate the uh, tread object you get this weird unravely pattern which is actually pretty cool but not necessarily what you want same thing happens in the opposite direction if you rotate the curve object the way you fix this grab the tread object grab the track object and if you find you're having trouble grabbing the tread object you can hold down shift and alt and right click and it'll bring up a list of all the things under the mouse the reason you do shift and alt is because obviously you've already got the tread selected um, normally you can just do alt and that will just select whatever you've done so there we go then you want to parent the object um, with a keep transform and you see there you've got this parent relationship object um, so if you rotate the tread object you will still get the weird issues but if you just rotate the track object you don't get the weird issues anymore so what we're now going to do is we're going to create some cylindrical sort of driver sort of objects I like to start working with 8 to 12 vertices on my cylinders and then if I need more detail I tend to subdivide but 8 will do for this demonstration tab into edit mode go into side view and rotate and scale it's best to do everything you can with scales and rotations in edit mode it can get quite confusing if you do it um, in object mode tab out of edit mode and what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that this rotates when this moves so how do we do this we go 
N to bring up the properties panel and we're going to be rotating in the Y axis as you can see here. Um, you can see up here it changes. So right click on that and say add single driver. Go up here, graph editor, select down here and change that to drivers. Select the Y Euler rotation and click N for properties. Default is scripted expression. What we want here for demonstration is some values. Down here we want to change the object or bone to the tread object and X location world space. You can also do local space and that has some bearing on how it rotates. So if we go here you'll see that that now rotates with it. But you also might notice it's inverted. So to fix that, instead of some values, we go scripted expression and we say minus var, or we could do var times minus one. Either way works perfectly fine. Um, I actually prefer minus var, but this way it allows you to change the amount that it scales. So for example, if you find that this doesn't rotate enough when this is moving, you can change it to say times minus five. Or if it moves too much, you could do times minus 0.2. Um, so I'll just oops, show you how that works. And then I'll show you what happens when you change that minus. So now you'll see that it actually rotates in the same direction as the track object or the tread object, which is what you want. So if I just set that to minus 5, and then you'll see that it rotates five times for every one blender unit that, that moves. So that, that, that's basically how you do that. Changing world space and local space changes how it is affected by things like parenting. So for example, if I were to move the track object, what you will see now is that it still rotates even though this isn't moving. If you change this to local space, what you should see is when we move the track, neither works, okay. <laughs> and if you do transform space, will that work? Will that work the way I think it does? No, okay. Okay, well, in essence, that's essentially the difference. Um, as I said, depending on how you've set things up, things can sort of change on you. <laughs> in ways that you don't necessarily expect. Um, so yeah, anyway, what we're now going to do is tab into edit mode and I wanted to make some cogs and I just forgot. So basically if you just press B, middle click and delete the, uh, unselect these faces, go to individual origins, alt E and extrude by individual faces and scale out a bit press X and shift Y and then we've got like this nice little coggy shape. So we could essentially say we're done. You could just parent this to the path of uh, the tra track object like oops like so. Keep transform and then move that to where you want it. And you're basically done. I mean, that'll move like that it'll rotate with it um, and then obviously as you move the tread that will move that's a very simple way of doing it and it will work but what we're actually going to do let me just undo all that for a second is we're going to build a sort of a more complicated assembly so what we need is two empties we will create one that's a cube and we shall call this assembly and it will be like the uber parent of everything so you'll want to parent the track to that keep transform and then we want to make another one call which will make a plane axis and we will call this one tread move and we want to parent that one to the assembly object as well and basically what we want now is we want it so that this, when this moves, so too will the tread object. You could potentially just parent the tread object straight to the assembly object and that will work. 
but be careful if you do if you do it with a keep transform really <laughs> last time I did this when I parented this to this you ended up with um, a weird thing where it basically inverted but it inverted in a weird way so I wasn't expecting that to work um, so that is potentially one way you can do it but you will notice that actually when you move it this way you get like the negative effect um, and when you move that that doesn't change and what you really want is when the whole assembly moves you want this to move with it so the way you fix this is you go to here and we go constraint copy location and we'll say invert an X and we will make that into the tread move so what you'll see now is as you move that forward that rotates as you move this forward everything works and then finally you'll want to parent this to the assembly and if we just Alt G on everything so it's all back in the center except for the camera didn't mean to do that uh, so just box select everything control uh, Alt G to move everything back to the center you'll see now everything rotates with the thing but if also if you then want to say move individually to like get a wheel spin effect you can animate this moving forward and then you can still move oops sorry you can still move this independently so that's the way that's the reason we did it that way um, and if we just go into top mode uh, and select that and you see the whole assembly is now rotatable you can now rotate this any orientation that you want so if your scene had it so that you needed your conveyor belt or your tank facing a different orientation all you need to do is just move that assembly object and everything moves with it this is a much simpler way of doing it than say trying to model everything in the correct orientation in the first place so then I just want to move this to here shift D and we'll create a couple more objects just to make it look a bit more tanky and then as we move everything should work and it does so huzzah we've done so I hope you found this useful um, it's a fairly simple thing to do but as you might have seen a lot of things can sort of just react a little bit differently to how you expect and so that's why I wanted to do this tutorial was to just sort of show you how to get around those um, and just sort of show you the general process of doing it so I hope it helped and I hope you liked it um, I'm just going to very quickly show you how you would do it with a Bezier curve because that can also cause a lot of problems so create a Bezier curve and we're just going to move to a separate layer for a second because we don't really want to be messing around with what we have already tab into edit mode RX90 and we've got it here so if you wanted to create your tread object so that this, the potential scene was at the bottom you'd go this way round and then Alt C to fill in the curve you don't necessarily have to fill in the curve if it's a conveyor belt where you're only going to be seeing the top and sides then you may be better off just leaving it without that closed circle and that's the reason why a bezier might be more adv advantageous um, in the circle I'd say it gives you more control but what you will find is you get the same pitfall where if you try to um, uh, sorry one sec fingers not doing what I'm telling them to do um, if you try to do the array modifier now because you've gone downwards on the curve object what you'll find is when you do the curve modifier uh, that one, it's inside out again and that's not really what you want because then you have to fiddle around with the negative scaling and everything 
what it's actually better to do is start your object going this way up and I'll just use the same curve object for speed because I only wanted to show this point off briefly um, and again we then close it with Alt C and then you'll notice that because the curve essentially goes up from the origin when you add the curve modifier what you should find hopefully if, if everything's working the way it should um, and fit curve Bezier object. You see it works better if you have the Bezier curve going up from the origin rather than down. So that's the main pitfall with using the Bezier curve over the circle. Um, but as I said the Bezier, curves, Bezier curve gives you a lot more control over your shape. Um, and again you've got the same issue here where you get potential gaps and that's how you fix those. Um, so yeah, go nuts. Sorry, one final thing before we go is I wanted to show you what happens with the Bezier curve if you you might have noticed I went one, two, one, two. I wanted to show you what happens if you go one, two, three, four. So we'll just create the Bezier curve again. R at, uh, Rx and ninety. And if we just go boom 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 and Alt C, fit curve, Bezier curve, Bezier curve. And you see again it inverts, which isn't ideal. Um, there was another reason why I wanted to show you that, but I can't think what it was. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I just personally find it's easier to sort of go 1, 2, 1, 2, and then just continue around until you need to close it and then go Alt C. Just to prove that this method works the way I say it does, if we delete that busier curve again, create a new one, Rx90, you might find that it works better to go down using this method. So just go all the way around and Alt C, fit the busier curve, and busier curve. And you get some really weird things going on but that could be easily fixed. That was the final thing I wanted to show you. Um, if you get things like this, basically what's happened is your curve is too small and too close together or your points are sort of too cramped. And you can basically fix it by um, just spacing everything out or making the handle smaller or bigger. Um, but yeah, this is the main reason why I showed you to do, showed you going one two, one two, and then joining in the middle, because you get less. I found you get less reliable results um, doing it this way round. Often you'll find that weird twisting also occurs because you've got like points that are just not sitting along the rest of it. That's not to say you can't. Um, make a nice curved path like so. In fact in the preview video which I'll link to below, um, the very first object I had was sort of more like this shape but basically what happens is you can get weird effects because of the, the way the curves are pointing or the curve points are pointing and how, how they're aligned with each other. So as I said in text earlier in the video I while I was editing this I actually worked out how to guarantee making sure that the tread appears on the outside of the object if that's what you want so I'll just quickly show you how to do that sort of despite what I said in the video uh, about always rotating in edit mode rotating and scaling I actually found that the reason it flips inside is because we rotated it this way so negative if we were to have flipped it this way in edit mode and then if I just quickly add in the cube uh, scale that down and S and X to make it narrow array and curve and fit curve boom 
Right, so you can see because I when I flipped it x positive 90 you get the right um, you get the right sort of thing. You'll also notice that that happens. <laughs> so if you were to flip it the other way you get it inside as we were getting it. So that's how you fix it if you rotate in edit mode. Um, and I'm just going to sort of revert that for a second. If you however rotate it the opposite direction in object mode you get the same thing. And then if you can tr apply the rotation using control A which you should do if you if you rotate something in object mode it's always best to apply the rotation location and or scale um, as if it's a fresh object then. Um, but you'll notice if you if you apply it so that it's facing outwards then it flips and if you apply it so it's facing inwards it also flips outwards. And the reason for this is I think because when it's inside out in object mode it's negative and then when you set that to zero it flips it because it's no longer negative if that makes sense. Um, so basically yeah that's that that's just a very quick explanation as to how you can basically guarantee that you get the the tread object facing the right direction on your curve without having to worry about the curve direction being flipped. Um, so I hope that helped uh, sort of clear it up. And one final thing as an addendum, I also mentioned in text that during the driver setup what you might find is when you come to do the uh, script expression it says error python execution dis disabled. So if I then say minus var and uh, let's just create a quick empty and we say x location on the empty you'll see that doesn't work but just prove that it's because that error python if you do some value you then it works so basically the way you fix the scripted expression not working is you go file user preferences and under file it says here auto run python scripts which in recent versions of Blender has actually been turned off by default for security reasons. Um, but if you're a user that knows what you're doing and or wants to use a bit more advanced functionality you need to turn this on. Um, and then you can exclude paths um, that might have potentially dangerous scripts in them. So for example on the wiki it says disable your downloads folder and that disable your temp folder and then you're fairly safe against um, rogue scripts trying to run in Blender and doing horrible things to you. So yeah, those are the two things I wanted to cover as extra things. So if I then uh, update dependencies or just go minus far and then that should it works again. So there you go, that, that, that's basically the extra little bit of content I needed to put at the end. So. Thanks for watching, I hope it was useful. Um, please like and subscribe if you liked it, and let me know in the comments if you have any problems, or if you would like to give me suggestions for other tutorials. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!